Okay, hi everyone. Welcome. Uh, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, depending on your time zone. It gives me Im immense pleasure to introduce today's speakers, Mr. Harshul Gupta and Mr. William Isaac. Uh, Mr. William Isaac is a 2017 SSGS scholar. He is a senior digital IC design engineer at Alphaware IP, based in Ontario and Canada. Um, Mr. Gupta is a PhD candidate in high energy physics at the University of uh, Illinois at Chicago. Uh, both of them will be talking about how to shortlist universities uh, for AMS. Um, the AMS part will be covered by uh, Mr. Isaac and uh, the PhD part will be covered by Mr. Gupta. Uh, so without any ado, let's hear from the speakers. Thank you. Asalaamu Alaikum everyone. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh... Thank you for uh, having me uh, for this presentation. So uh, today uh, I'm going to talk about uh, shortlisting universities for masters. Uh, and uh, Harshal is going to focus on uh, more on the PhD. Um, so um, I'll, I'll give a brief introduction uh, of my uh, my career path till now and my education as well. I graduated from uh, BTEC in electronics engineering um, in 2017. My uh, professor was uh, Professor Ikram Khan. Um, and then after that, I applied to uh, universities in uh, Canada and uh, Germany. Uh, I, I was looking for a, a a coursework based masters and i was uh, looking for some uh, 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 a professor who specializes in uh, vlsi design ic design and uh, i i was able to get in touch with professor roman Genov in uh, university of toronto and uh, uh, that's where i i did my masters mng from and then after that, uh, I went into the industry and uh, currently I'm working as a, a senior IC design engineer uh, here in Toronto. And, um, yeah, uh, so uh, let me uh, let me go through uh, what what I did for for uh, getting my admit into M, uh, into MH. Uh, my journey was uh, getting my uh, TOEFL, uh, IELTS, and GRE scores ready by uh, October 2016. For, uh, so I was targeting the fall uh, semester admit, which uh, starts in uh, which started in September 2017. Uh, and for that, uh, you know, uh, we have to start early, and uh, it's it's actually more advisable to uh, take these tests earlier than this. Uh, October was when I had these results ready and uh, you should try to uh, give some some more time so that uh, if you have to give a second trial, you can uh, have them ready before you start applying to universities and before you start choosing uh, universities. So uh, November was when uh, I started uh, shortlisting all the universities and started mailing professors. And uh, this is the part that we'll be focusing on today. Um, yeah, uh, and then after that, you might you might hear back from some of these professors, and uh, some of these professors might uh, request uh, video interviews and uh, more details from you. So uh, you you have to uh, give some time uh, before the application so that you can fulfill all the criteria of. of of uh, the potential supervisors that you are going uh, to be working under. And then uh, after that, after a uh, crucial wait period, you, you'll you hopefully uh, get multiple offers. And then uh, now you really get to choose the university that you're going into, and then you start the visa process. So. Yeah, uh, let's talk more about this, uh, deciding the university's face. Uh, before, before we start looking into uh, the universities uh, themselves, we, uh, 
we need to understand what kind of masters we are uh, looking for. So, uh, especially in Canada, uh, there are two types of masters. Uh, I mean, uh, this is true for uh, almost everywhere that uh, there are thesis based masters and uh, coursework based masters. Uh, in Canada, they are just named MASC, which is Master of Applied Science and uh, Master of Engineering. Uh, the thesis-based masters builds towards uh, PhD, so you know that this is more uh, uh, research-based. So uh, you'll have to uh, you'll have to publish some papers. You'll have to work in the lab of your professor. So. Uh, since you're uh, working on research, uh, you you need to have a supervisor. So uh, this is almost always funded by the university, and uh, you you'll have to uh, contact professors prior to applications, and uh, because uh, you you have to uh, work on your thesis with with your supervisor. So uh, here uh, it is important to show uh, research that you have done some research through publications, maybe through uh, in your uh, bachelor's or you have some uh, papers in the press. Uh, you, you need to show that. And uh, this one is uh, thesis based. So you have to defend your thesis and uh, depending on your prof supervisors, um, graduation criteria it might take take you uh, more time so this the duration of thesis based masters is usually uh, uh, 2.5 to 3 years uh, for for example my professor was uh, adamant on having the first uh, paper that you publish it has to go into a very uh, reputed journal only then uh, will he uh, will he allow you to publish your paper somewhere else and uh, to complete your master's his uh, requirement was to have at least uh, two uh, publications so uh, it the thesis based masters depends on your uh, supervisor uh, but you also need to complete some course uh, courses so you have to take some credits uh, on the other side is the uh, MNG. This is mainly targeted for the university, and uh, and this is almost always self-funded. You don't uh, need a supervisor, and uh, the the decision just is it's just made by the admission committee. So uh, since you do uh, you, you do not have uh, you do not have to work in the lab, you have more time to apply for internships in the uh, in the uh, summer semester, so uh, this this is more industry oriented, and uh, since in this coursework based, you have to uh, you have to complete uh, certain credits and then you graduate. So the duration is usually sm uh, smaller, so it's uh, one point five to two years, and uh, there are some courses that are MNG only. Uh, and these are taught by industry experts, and uh, these industry experts are also uh, looking to hire new people. So this is a good way of uh, making your way into the industry. And uh, how, yeah, so uh, MASC versus MNG, how, how does this affect your university shortlisting? So uh, if you are going for MASC, you're going for, uh, for research work based masters you uh you would choose a university or lab or professor with with uh higher research impact which uh, means that they are uh, constantly uh, publishing in uh, high impact journals and and uh and their research area it's uh, it aligns and matches well with uh, what you are working on your projects and your uh, publications and uh you you need to know uh, that they have sufficient funding to uh, to cover your masters that their funding will not uh, uh, run out before your masters completes so uh, uh, yeah that is mainly uh, that you will choose a bigger university and uh, a professor with better reputation and uh, yeah you 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 need to uh, see that uh, 
in the lab there are uh, more senior senior phd students if if that's the case then you know uh, by the time that you uh, complete your masters you can uh, the the professor will be looking for phd students right uh, so you can go for phd in the same lab as well uh, for image you would be uh, looking for mainly just uh, choosing a city with better uh, job opportunities for example if you are in vlsi maybe you would you would want to stick to california or uh, texas and uh, you, uh, just choosing the city itself becomes more important uh, when doing an image and uh, here you need to you need to check that the alumni uh, of that university are at uh, managerial or hiring position they are hiring managers in the industry and uh, you have to check that uh, they have the university has better courses so uh, you have to open up the curriculum and uh, look at their courses and see that they're actually teaching something that that that's going to apply in the industry um, Okay, so someone is annotating, uh, but I already annotated it. Uh, okay, the, the top universities. Uh, so now how do you choose? Uh, now you know uh, what criteria to look for if you're going for a research or you're going for courses, uh, then how do you choose? Uh, how do you know which universities are the best, best ones? Uh, and how do you rank compare them based on some uh, uh, some uh, review agency so uh, for that i think this is the most uh, popular one uh, we we look at the qs world ranking i think uh, most of us have already uh, looked at this uh, just to find our dream university just to uh, check out their reviews and uh, uh, find out which just the names of uh, universities that exist in the in uh, in our target country. So uh, it's important that you actually uh, take a look at the ranking uh, based on your subject. So, uh, for example, I would uh, choose from here my electrical and electronics engineering and uh, find out the top whatever 100, 200 universities and uh, check out their website. So uh, this is probably the most common way uh but you you also need to uh align your prof match your profile with the universities if you just go by qs world ranking you would probably just choose the uh the top top tier universities but uh you you need to uh match your profile whatever uh cgpa your GR, gre score your toefl uh with with the uh admission requirement and admission expectations of that university. So uh, every uh, university will have a minimum admission requirements uh, section. Almost every university will have that. And uh, it it defines that uh, to be considered for an admit, you need to have a minimum of uh, uh, b grade a grade whatever grade uh, in your in your bachelor's so this is not uh, necessarily uh, this does not necessarily say that if you have this uh, grade you will get an admit it just says that this is uh, what they consider good and this is what they consider acceptable but uh, the pool of candidates that they will get will most certainly be uh, uh, higher than this. So this is a, a good way of matching your profile with the universities and uh, shortlisting which ones you can get into. Uh, I, I can stop here for uh, some questions if, if there are. So uh, let's keep going. Uh, there, there are many tools uh, right now. You can, you can just uh, enter your uh, your scores. Your uh, yep. OK. 
Okay. There are some annotations again on my slide. Yeah, sorry about that. We uh, we're looking for the okay. of this. Um, no uh, so uh, right now we have uh, many tools available that uh, that we can use. We can uh, enter our uh, domain, our subject. Uh, uh, what are our uh, what is our GPA, the test scores, and uh, the target country, and uh, we can get a list of suggestions, which uh, which includes uh, historical results. So they uh, these. Uh, websites they know uh, from uh, crowdsourcing information that this is the type of uh, student that is admitted to this university and uh, also they take into account their minimum admission requirements and uh, that's how uh, they're able to suggest uh, a, a tier of universities so uh, they would they would give you some uh, target schools, some ambitious schools, and so a, a variety of uh, safety schools. So uh, these, I'll, I'll talk about these later on, but uh, you you can use either QS World Ranking or uh, Yocket or Edulix. There are many websites. I have linked them uh, in this presentation. I, uh, I, I hope that this pres presentation can be shared with, with the audience later on. So. You can uh, just visit these websites and uh, enter your scores and uh, get a list of uh, suggested universities. So, yeah, uh, especially on Edulix, you can also uh, you can also see uh, in real time people uh, upload whenever they get an admit. People upload that uh, uh, the these this was their score and they got an admit from. Uh, uh, for example, Portland State University. So you get an idea of uh, what kind of scores and what kind of profile is going uh, is getting an admit this year. So uh, the tiered approach that I was talking about, uh, which which is uh, the same for masters and PhD. Uh, so uh, this this includes uh, setting choosing a set of uh, five or six universities that uh, that spreads over three categories. Uh, the first one is ambitious uh, universities. So if, if you are uh, not a risk taker, then uh, probably you'll just keep one or zero ambitious universities in your, uh, in your uh, set of five to six universities. And uh, this Ambitious university would be a dream, would be your dream in uh, university, and uh, probably within top hundred world ranking. And uh, it's it would be good if you meet and exceed at least one of the minimum the minimum admission requirement. Uh, that way, you're not just uh, wasting uh, wasting your admission fees, uh, your uh, application fees. At least uh, you, you this should be within reach and uh, for your target universities this is where you need to focus most of your time for you you need to email professors in this university you need to uh, uh, browse their website and uh, know all their minimum admission requirements and uh, maybe uh, look at uh, websites about their reviews and uh, for this one you must you must be meeting almost all admission requirements and uh, your uh, your research your project should strongly align with the research area of these uh, these target universities and it uh, yeah if you uh, if you have been mailing professors here and you if you have heard back from a prof uh, professor here then uh, yeah that you can uh, keep that as your target university and then uh, the safe universities are uh, the ones that you uh, you know for sure you'll get an admit from here. So uh, the spread should be maybe uh, one or zero uh, universities in ambitious uh, uh, three and maybe a 50-50 split between target and safe. Uh, but the safe universities are the ones uh, 
uh, where you might have heard a positive reply from the professor and you know that uh, AMU alumni uh, frequently get admits from this university. Uh, so when you're going for a research uh, based masters, then you you need to take into account the funding. You uh, you need to know which professors are funded, right? Uh, only then uh, you would feel confident that he he is accepting new patients. He uh, sorry new uh, uh, students, and he uh, has the potential for uh, for funding your PhD as well. Maybe uh, so uh, there are. There are uh, websites which uh, which broadcast that uh, grant awards have been uh, won by some professors. So for Canada, there's uh, NSERC a website which uh, which every year they they release a, a list of uh, professors that have won grants. Uh, research grants so uh, for example i just at, uh, attached a screenshot here you can uh, look at the uh, you can look at the title of the research and uh, which uh, professor and uh, department has won the award so uh, they, they're winning uh, huge amounts of uh, grants and they uh, use this to sponsor uh, masters and phd students so you can uh, focus on these professors while emailing them and um, when you uh, when you choose a university, uh, I think uh, more often than not, it just uh, boils down to uh, choosing the city uh, of that university. So uh, you you have to make a choice uh, whether you want to uh, go into a uh, a big city uh, or. Uh, a big city where uh, you you might have better job prospects, or uh, a smaller city where uh, the university is still well renowned and the professor is uh, well renowned. So, if you're going for a PhD, for example, you might uh, you might want to choose a a smaller uh, uh, university with with a more renowned professor with uh, more prominent research. So, uh, that choice depends on. Uh, what's your end goal uh is it working in uh in the industry in a metropolis or going for a phd next so uh you also need to consider the accommodation costs the crime rate uh if if you are uh allergic to the uh, canadian winter or uh and then uh, an important one you need to consider the job prospects uh for for job uh just trying to find uh, how a city is in in terms of uh, jobs you you need to uh, open up the i guess you all uh, might have used vpns from time to time you can uh, go to that country uh, with your vpn and uh, just Actually, you don't even need to use a VPN for uh, Indeed.ca or Glassdoor.ca. For and so this is specifically for Canada. You uh, you can uh, go to Indeed.ca and check uh, the number of open positions. For example, I I attached a screenshot of uh, AI data scientist, and uh, you'll get a uh, an idea of how many jobs for uh, for a data scientist are there in in toronto and uh, what are their salary uh, expected salary and how uh, just uh, what kind of jobs there are you can also use uh, linkedin uh, to check that uh, the university the university that you are applying to their alumni uh, how they are doing uh, which positions are they on right now and uh, you can also check uh your the the professor that you are emailing or what are their connections uh are their students uh, past students uh in good positions and uh things like that so uh in summary i i would just uh summarize this that uh, select you need to select a set of five or six universities and uh, uh the selection is uh supposed to be based on their ranking uh funding opportunities and tuition fees uh you you also need to 
uh, take into account what's uh, your profile, your CGPA, GRE, TOEFL scores, your publication and pro uh, projects. Does this align with the uh, research that's going on in the university, the uh, job prospects in that city, or maybe in that country? Because you can always, uh, after completing your master's, uh, you can uh, move to a different city it's just that uh, if if there is a uh, interview then you have to go to that city uh, uh, and and uh, interview with the uh, company and uh, an important part is to apply early uh, because uh, it's it's uh, often a queue based system uh, the admits that come in late they're of uh, students with higher caliber and uh, early admits if if uh, if you want to uh, get an advantage uh, because they they do not have a bigger a big enough pool yet and they find your uh, profile uh, uh, good then they will give you an early admit as well and uh, and just uh, keep track of the emails and application portals whenever they uh, they might. Uh, ask or request for some additional documents, you need to be ready to provide them. Uh, that's that's all that I wanted to present and uh, I'll hand it over to Harshal. Thank you. Uh, thanks, William Isaac Bhai, uh, a lot um, for this wonderful and summarized talk. Uh, let's, uh, before going to Harshal, let's uh, hear from the participants about like if they, if they have any questions. Um, so we'll open the floor uh, for maybe five minutes or so uh, for the question right now. 